How's it going? Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Uh, this is another request today. Uh, I can't for the life of me find who it was who actually requested it, but it was for the track Vintage Culture and Chemical Disco, Last Night I Met Puffy. Uh, and it's for the bass. So it was a while back, I was scrolling through some uh, old saved sets in Ableton and I found this, and it was it's virtually done, and he had to tweak it ever so slightly to get it sounded like the original. Anywho, this is it. With a little bass uh, beat I made. Okay, there you go, lovely deep house bass, nice and straightforward this one is, um, there's quite a bit of processing on the channel itself but um, we'll talk about that quickly now. Um, I've got two layers, uh, the second layer is identical to the first layer, the only difference is that I've pitched it down an octave uh, and also I've shifted this up from neg negative two octaves to negative one. So both the same patches, one taking care of the real lows, the subby part, as you can see, I've got some EQ in here, cutting some things out of the way and making this the sub. I've also shifted the frequency of the saturator to 255 hertz rather than 577. So yeah, this is it, the basic patch. So it's just some EQ and a bit of compression and some saturation. So I'll turn all of that off for now so you can just hear the patch purely. And this is the patch we're gonna be making. Nothing to it, one envelope doing the work. All it's controlling is a cutoff and then uh, the EQ when it comes to the effects section. Nice and straightforward, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right, <laughs> we're gonna initialize this. So as you could tell from the uh, snapshot that I just showed you while it was playing, it's just two saw waves, oscillator A and B. Um, we're gonna pull octave one, negative one for oscillator A, negative two for oscillator B quickly show you these MIDI notes God, it took me ages to to replicate this melody I don't know why I'm still not convinced I've got it on this on the right note to like the original but they're bouncing between C2 and B2 and then there's a little flick of some higher notes that that true vintage culture style So oscillator A had three voices in unison. A lot of these vintage culture sound, vintage culture sounds, you can definitely tell they add some unison, and then the filter sort of hones it in. So it's quite a wide sounding bass, and um, specifically this layer that we're creating now. So yeah, detune down to about 0.05. Oscillator B, this is the deeper one. We only wanted three voices in unison and a very slight amount of detune. Both the volumes where they come as standard. Don't do anything with a panning. We didn't do anything with a warp mode. Oscillator, sub oscillator. Click it, turn it on. Two octaves down. I generally only ever use a sine wave or a squared sine wave when I'm, when I'm using this as a direct out which I'm going to do now so click the direct out button so the sub oscillator is going to bypass the filter and all the effects section just go straight to the output crank the volume up to full so the amp envelope we're going to create that make a little pluck with this before we go ahead and assign an envelope to the filter, so release where it comes as standard, no sustain, and then you can control the length of the sound with the decay. Um, I didn't do anything, I just changed like the curve so it was more like a shark fin. Tiny bit of attack. See what happens if you decrease the decay rapidly. Mm -hmm. 
really cuts the notes off sharp. So in all honesty it's probably not doing much this amp envelope. Uh, most of the work's been done by the filter. So the filter that I chose was an MG Low 12 which it comes on as standard so I'll just turn that on. Resonance pulled down slightly. Drive 35% fat virtually the same. Starting point I had all the way around to about 10,000 Hertz maybe a little less six or seven maybe and then we're going to use envelope 2 to control this filter we're going to use it to close it slowly well quickly over time so that's why you want it open we're going to use envelope to close it using the attack time so drag it drop it on it pull it all the way back we'll, we'll fiddle with the destination amount because that really uh, has quite a large impact on how the sound comes out but these are the settings you're going to want. You're going to want the sustain on full. So once the attack closes the filter, it stays closed until a new MIDI note comes in. So sustain on full. The decay is irrelevant because we're bypassing that um, attack time of just under a third of a second. So 290 milliseconds, something like that. 300. We're going to create a curve that looks a little like that. 160 milliseconds of release, so it's not too abrupt. Same sort of curve coming out the other way, and that is it. You can hear B going, uh, not going into the filter yet. You need to make sure A and B are highlighted so that both the oscillators are being controlled by the filter. There you have it, beautiful. We're going to change it to monophonic. It is a bass patch. Uh, we don't want to be playing notes polyphonic. There's no glider as such on this, but it's an easy way to uh, make sure that you don't play two notes at the same time. So that's the main main work done. It's just a few effects now, just to help thicken it up even more. So as I said earlier on, it is quite a wide sounding sound sounding sound how saying that but it is it is quite a wide sounding sound uh, the way we got an extra little bit of width is by this um, hyper dimension the hyper being an extra um, an extra amount of units and voices you can apply on and then the detune spreads it pushes it even wider so that's all I did I just turned it on 31 percent ish 31 25 percent mix Just adds in a little bit more depth, distortion, turn it on, pull the mix down to about 55%, don't mess with the drive, we didn't use the filter in pre or post mode, just to help rough it up around the edges ever so slightly, and then we used an EQ to bring out some of the lows, um, I kept it on a low shelf, the left part, I increased the gain to around about 3.8 dB. I might need to start turning this down again now. I then used uh, a high cut or a low pass filter on the right hand side, uh, doing the same thing that the filter is doing, just to help accentuate that sort of plucky feel. Tiny bit of gain at the cut off point. Starting point around about 7,000 Hertz, so slightly higher just in case anything came through. Uh, and then we're going to use the same envelope to control this to give it that same sort of pluck. You can see it's got the same action going on as what the filter has. And that's it for the patch. Truly nothing to it. Two saw waves, a bit of fine tuning with an, uh, an envelope on the filter, tiny bit of distortion and hyper dimension, a bit of EQing, done. Um, how I got the fullness and the thickness of the sound was to do with the outboard effects. As I say, the saturator is just a stock Ableton saturator. I boosted the drive 2.8 dB. That's why um, I've just pulled that down from its original point three or four db to compensate for the uh, extra increase in gain that the satur saturator is giving um, it's on a soft sign uh, and i'm aiming it around 577 hertz that's it
so saturator is on tiny bit of compression and some EQing again I've boosted these frequencies around about 4 dB I'll turn I'll I'll AB the EQ so you can hear the difference really really helps accentuate the uh, saturation uh, I've got that aimed at 577 Hertz one two three four five right smack bang on that I've got this little peak which is boosting that saturation which is really warming the whole sound up um, the second layer I already spoke about it's just an octave down saturate around a little bit lower because we've cut some of the we've cut everything from around about 400 Hertz a real gradual slope the main heart of this is around about 100 Hertz no compression on this one. I've got a tiny bit of glue compression on the mix just to bring the two bases together and they sound like this. And with the little beat that I constructed. There you go, Vintage Culture and Chemical Disco. Last night I met Puffy, bass with serum. As with most of these videos that are coming out now, I'm not going to be giving you this patch for free. It is quite simple to make. If you do not want to make it yourself, just hang on a month or so, month max, and it will be released in my forthcoming serum sound bank, which is based around Deep House and New Disco basses. Uh, it's going to be released on Outbreak Audio. There will be a link in the description to it when it is done. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Many more tutorials to come. Cheers.